Okay, so it looks like we've got an episode called Top Bolt this week, finally bringing us back to the Wonder Bolts after Rainbow Dash joined. Oh, and if you're wondering what happened to my video on Where the Apple Lies, that episode was some of the most potential all season with a story about Applejack's childhood. Your big sister lied so much when she was a filly, the whole family ended up in a hospital. You and I both know you don't hate to say anything. I've always thought that the most important thing a pony can do is say exactly what's on his mind to any pony who listens, so every pony everywhere always knows everything you're thinking. You just can't see Granny right now because she's got apple blight. <gasps> I thought on the trees got the blight. So, gags with no basis in character development about how Big Mac and AJ were the opposite of themselves when they were younger, and it got them mixed up in a hijinks-filled misadventure. Well, that just kind of makes the whole thing seem like a sitcom. A cheesy, cheesy, cheesy sitcom. Uh, no points either for implying that Big Mac is just another archetype of the big, strong lug who prefers to be an idiot and never think about new ideas, or for making Applejack an actual idiot because he can't think of a better way to move the plot along. Still, you had a few funny moments, so color me indifferent, I guess. But yeah, I'm not giving it any more time than that. I am so burnt on picking through lukewarm stories that never gave me much reason to care in the first place, than having people tell me that I like being negative. Anyway, so what's Top Bolt about? Let's see, Rainbow Dash is summoned alongside Twilight of all ponies to solve a friendship problem in the Wonderbolts Academy between a passive, highly considerate wing pony named Vapor Trail and her lead pony Sky Stinger, who's arrogant, boastful, and just as much an inseparable best friend to her as she is to him. Okay, that's the good stuff. Now we're talking. Let's review Top Bolt. Okay, so in a nutshell, this episode is the story of confidence and all different sides of it. We have Rainbow Dash, who thrives on high confidence and quickly wilts when in doubt. Twilight, who thrives on her confidence being challenged because she's more pragmatic and always assumes she can improve. And these two, who simply put, think that all they need is one of these approaches, but could actually stand to learn something about the other. One day you might come close to being almost as good as me. Oh, I don't think so. So first, there's Vapor Trail's half of the plot. I'll just say it up front. They nail it this time. They do a great job depicting someone who cares so much about supporting her friends and making things good that it's actually too one-sided. Her friend is leaning on her without even knowing it, and she's not caring enough about her own needs. It actually makes you get behind her arc before you even realize why it's so important. Like, I seriously love this moment here after she spends some time with Rainbow Dash drawing out her potential. I can't believe I was able to keep up! That's the first nice thing I've heard you say about yourself. Not to mention, they do a really great job capturing the mannerisms of a humble, stammering introvert. Oh no, I can't let that happen. I mean, uh, uh, aw, sugar cubes. In fact, with her around, this entire friendship is absolutely precious. The way she looks out for Skye and shows him affection without even seeming to realize it is just so lovable. And it actually makes Skye look nicer just for the fact that he appreciates this and seems to want to look out for her too. Which makes his blowhard attitude a little easier to take. And that brings us to Skye himself. I mean, imagine right when you've been growing an oversized ego in the spotlight, you found out your friend has been making you think you're more talented than you are and getting people to notice you. You'd probably have a rush of conflicting emotions. You might lash out at them for leading you here, but you'd also probably feel like they're your only friend in the world now. One way or another, you'd probably sound really unsure of what to do next. Unless, of course, you're a flat, simplified, one-dimensional character, in which case your reaction might be more like... Was this your plan the whole time? To embarrass me? No! Don't you know me at all? I guess not, since it took me this long to find out you're a terrible wing pony. I can't believe I was ever your friend! How could you do this to me? I bet you wanted to betray me all along. I am no longer your friend. And I wish I never was. Seriously, like every single moment with this guy, it's like they think it can never be clear enough that he's cocky and arrogant. Instead of any moment that makes him seem remotely aware of what he sounds like, let alone like he has other qualities that make him not one note, it's like they're always trying to fit in one more line about him thinking he's great. Compare it to how well they showed us the different sides to Rainbow Dash back when she was the most arrogant one. Even when they did play up what a narcissist she was, there was always a sense of self-awareness to it, like it was a joke we were supposed to be in on with a point to it. This just feels like the writers working through their personal issues with brag arts. We'll keep working and who knows, 
One day you might come close to being almost as good as me. Also, it doesn't help that all of this rests on one of the show's bigger contrivances in recent memory. Show me one example of a friend somehow enabling someone to pull off incredible feats that make them come across as a better athlete than they and everyone else actually are, without anyone, including the friend in question, noticing and just thinking they're that darn good, all without ever being able to do any of it on their own, and I'll point out why you know darn well that your example is not the same thing, let alone a reason to see this as good writing. If Vapor Trail was maybe just tipping Sky from good to better, that could work. But watching him screw up Twilight's test so utterly and still think he's locked in as the best is so contrived, it's almost as annoying as he is. Nobody is that arrogant! What? Seriously, why not use this guy to show what actual overconfidence looks like? It's not that you have to give him redeeming qualities if you don't want to, but how about less dialogue on how he's a robot trying to imitate arrogant behavior, and more of the not thinking he has to train and not minding when he doesn't get it perfect? You know, something a little more subtle. Eddie had warned me several times about my attitude and my lack of intensity in working out, and I guess I needed someone to knock me on my behind to prove it. The difference between confidence and overconfidence is not training properly and entering the ring against your opponent without any fear. Fear is a good thing if properly controlled, and for me, if I didn't enter the fight with any butterflies in my stomach, then I was overconfident. When I ducked under the ropes to enter the ring for that particular fight, I didn't have any butterflies. Jose Luis Garcia knocked me out in the eighth round. Still though, Twilight's part of the plot with him works pretty well and keeps the theme going. By tying it back to her own journey to become a good group therapist, she gives a really good example of how accepting that you could be better and feeling the need to improve isn't necessarily so bad, as long as you believe you can. In fact, sometimes it can unlock something special. And then of course, we get the two friends training montage, which shows off more of their best side together and gives us something I really wish the episode had gone further with both of them realizing they're better at certain things and using that to help each other. If it had woven that more into the plot from an early point, this really could have been an interesting episode. As is, it's good. But not tip the scales good. It's yet another episode that chooses to just drop a potential plot thread from earlier this season, now that Rainbow Dash apparently just sort of is the Wonderbolt's Golden Girl after all. And all in all, it's nothing that's going to elevate Season 6 a level. So now, our last chance all the way around is the finale. which I apparently could have just skipped to. Whoops, it may not wear the Apple Lies episode anyway. I mean, come on. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, send it to Sky Stinger. And if you'd like to watch another video review, click the link on the right. Otherwise, just check the description for more links, and I'll see you next time.